Hello. Brown sugar, you were here early. <laughs> I I see you came 76 minutes ago. That's pretty funny. Were you early? <laughs> Maybe you're not even back yet. I always do that. I'm like a rush to get ready somewhere. Hi, Terry. And, um, you know, like at home, you rushing and get ready. And then you're like, oh, I have 10 minutes extra. And then you're like, I'll just do this one thing. And then you're late. Hi, Rachel. How's it going? Hi, Rachel. <laughs> How many Rachels can we get today? So um, I think this is definitely going to be a three-part sewing. I don't want to rush, which of course, you know, is not, never a good idea. And I, the person gave me their sleeve length measurements and I had it in the back of my head. And then when I, I forgot to adjust the sleeve yesterday based on it, I knew there was something I needed to do and I just forgot. And then at night I was like, oh yeah, I need to adjust the sleeve. So I went to do it today. I was like, oh, this seems like a big adjustment. So I want to double check before I cut this much off the coat. So um, we're going to do a lot though today. And now I'm a lot less like, okay, great. We'll just finish it on Monday. You guys are probably like sitting around by the fire, you know, you know, nothing to do before the holidays, right? You just chill with me. So um, anyway, I've got the toggles all ready to put on and uh, we're gonna do that first because I really wanna get these things sorted because they're a little fiddly. So yay, exactly, Terry, one more. <laughs> So, um, yeah, we'll do that on uh, Monday, I think. Monday. Because Tuesday is like Christmas Eve, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll, we'll come. I'll come in on Monday. I was planning on coming anyway. So, all right, well, let's get going. Can you guys hear and see me okay? How's the lighting look? Because right at the last second, I took off the white balance, and this looks, it looks a little warm on the screen for me, but the lighting looks really good. So I'm going to leave it unless you guys say something different. So, hi, Brookie. How's it going? I cannot see the Twitch chat. It's on the right side of the screen, so I always have to, like, lean over. The YouTube's on the left. The Twitch is on the right. So weird. Looks good? All right. Okay, so I've never sewn toggles before. Not like this. I've made my own toggles before. Completely different. I didn't even know what I was doing when I did those. It was a long time ago. I've never bought pre-made toggles. So here's a couple of hints. Um, these little loops right here are variety of lengths on each one. So make sure all of your toggles, your loops line up. Like see, look, this one's a little long still. Um, so, and there, there's only tape at the back. Now my tape is, this is how they came to me. It was this little piece of cellophane, cellophane tape there. Um, the tape isn't that sticky once I unstick it, so that's why I really want to get these secured right away. The other thing I'm going to say is all of these right here, the one with the, um, the button, one of them, the, this part was flipped over. So kind of weird, um, something to look out for. And also these were not the same length. So you can see this is the one that wasn't flipped over because the, I don't know if you can tell with the leather, doesn't look as nice on this side. It's like it got touched to something because this leather looks nicer. So um, that's something to note. You only put on three pairs, so I can actually put this one aside, so it'll be okay. I'm gonna put my nicest ones on. So um, I don't have a leather needle, but this leather is pretty thin. I'm not worried about it at all with my machine. So if you are doing a home machine you might want a leather needle so the way i checked mine because it is a little fiddly is i lined these up like this and then i checked that loop and then on these what i did was um i stood them up like this and so here's another thing you can tell like these two bend this way and then the one that i think was upside down i think it was this one or wait, is that what it is? Yeah, this, this one of them bends like a different way because I had to flip it over. So I think this one and this one I'm gonna set aside. I'm gonna pick the nicest looking ones and we're gonna attach these. And um, everything we're kind of suggests to use the, use tape to put them on there. Hi, Malin, how's it going? 
All right, so I also fiddled with the zip band on uh, Thursday right after the stream. I just fin fixed it because I really wanted those flowers to line up and I did a much better job the second time around. So um, they're not perfect still. So if you do this, maybe don't pick something that you have to fussy cut so much, but it looks a lot better, you know? They're, they're down the center almost on all of them. They're a little bit still this. I worked and worked. I tried to get these stripes across from each other. A lot of loosey goosiness. It looks, it looks better. And thankfully there's this flap over it. But that's what I would say is if you are doing this band and I'm writing this in the project description on the website, don't use the lining. Um, I'm not sure why they call for the lining except for the fact that you wouldn't want to use this. It's just too thick for this little piece. Um, and then the, if you use a traditional coat lining, there's no way at all that that lining is going to hold up to using it as your zipper tab. Doesn't matter that you use two layers, that fabric is not meant to do that. So even if you interface it, so make sure you use a much stabler fabric for right here. This is just a quilting cotton and it could totally even have um, interfacing behind it. So um, that is my definite recommendation is don't use coat lining for this piece, which is what the pattern calls for. And they do mention in the pattern, hey, you know, if you want to use a contrast band, now's the time. But um, it's not really outlined, you know, if you're going to be what kind of lining that they thought you were using. So yeah, exactly, exactly, Brooke, I think you're right. So I knew, I know when to stop fiddling. It's hard, but you know, so yeah, we still have to finish the whole inside. And so I'm gonna take it apart right now to put the toggles on. But it is a separating zipper. The other funny thing is how much longer the coat is. That's not funny in a bad way. Um, I was just kind of surprised because if you if you wanted a longer zipper, you could do that. Granted, if your zipper's much longer, you're kind of bending down to like get it started, which is really awkward, so. This is probably a really good length. Like most jacket zip lengths in the center front, I feel like are in that 22, 24 inch range. So, and it's the same zip length for all sizes on this. All right, so let's see. I wanna remind myself, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I wanna remind myself which side gets the loop and which side gets the toggle because I don't want to do it the reverse. I mean, think of it this way. We're used to, um, why do I have so many of these? Oh, wait, never mind. I keep looking at these at this end. We're used to pushing a button through the hole. So this is your button. The one with the wood toggle on it is your button. So um, as a female, you're used to putting the button on the left front. I'm totally doubting myself every time I try and say it. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, that's true, Barbara. That is such a good point. Yeah, because I kind of felt like, oh, I hope this person realizes that it doesn't go all the way down because there's also only three toggles. This is where the toggles will be. And then the zipper extends. But um, I think that, you know, like I was like, oh, it's going to fly open, but I really don't think it will. I think it's going to be, this, this coat's going to be so cozy. All right, so let's start with, what is this? These are my three, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I put those others, okay. I changed my thread to a dark brown. And so this side is the um, toggle side. You can't really pin these on. So what I did was I pinned in to where the um, pattern had you mark and the pattern marking was a little further away this way from the center front, but that's because that, and that's why I made these fastened and then I put them on the coat and you kind of want them snug because the leather can stretch out a little bit. So you want to recognize the fact that um, over time it may be, get a little looser and you want it to stay toggled shut, right? Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, like these were all adjustable in length, but some of them had this much and some of them have, you know, a lot more to play with. See that? That's a full quarter of an inch different. So you just, you know, look at how much longer that one is. 
So you really have to go with the one that has the shortest amount of leather and go for that. So that's why I ended up with these, th this length. And let's see, what's the other thing I wanna say? Um, the width of the toggle placement on the pattern is wider. So what I did was I just went with the top one and then put the um, other one the same width as it. Um, I am gonna take a recommendation of taping it on there. I hate doing this, I don't know why, it really scares me. <laughs> uh, she puts it on in a little X, so. I guess I'll do that too. I really loathe to take out the <laughs> the tape <laughs> when I've stitched through it. Um, I, so I was watching, I looked at the Grain Line Studio site because I was looking for information on the sleeve length for this pattern. I can't find sleeve length measurements for this pattern anywhere. I can't find, um, I don't have the pattern envelope, I just have the um, PDF instructions. There's no finished measurements for the sleeve length anywhere that I can find or on the website. So that's also why I'm kind of doubting this um, sleeve adjustment. So I'm going to make sure, absolutely sure, that's the length. Because they, their arms are a little shorter than the pattern. And it's eight inches that I'd have to trim off. And that makes me, that's when you're getting into a lot of fabric. Also, the taper of the sleeve will be different. So I need to make sure I do that right before I just whack it off right but then i saw like when i looked for sleeve length this little toggle thing came up it was the only thing that came up in the um, search for um the cascade duffel coat was this toggle placement i was like oh this is appropriate so i checked it out and um got the the tape thing here they say it in the instructions but i was like all right i'm sold on the tape idea i'll try it but just like i said if you ever get the toggles make sure that all of your loops are the same length because mine weren't and all of your toggles, um, the fat end and the pointy end are all the same on all of them. Because that'll be weird when you're buttoning your coat and one has the fat end pushing through first, it'll be harder. So, all right, let's do this. The other thing that um, they recommend, not back stitching, because you're going to pull the thread to the back and hand tie it so it's nice and tidy. Um, I would really like to go over this this spot where the leather goes into the toggle twice. But I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that because of the, um, it would put, like if I went across it twice, I'd have my thread on uh, from too far away from each other. So, all right, should we do this? I kind of also want to not start at the corner where they do. I kind of want to start like in the middle maybe and go around. Or maybe down here. Let's clear a path. All right. So I'm just going through my whole um, front. I have interlining. Oh, and this is the one thing I did without you guys. I stitched the horsehair to the underarm on the flannel interlining. And then I just tacked it to the, the um, shirt right here in the corner. So because I didn't use fusible interfacing for this, this is the step I completely forgot to do um, because you, when you have fusible interfacing, the very first step on this pattern is to fuse all of the fusible interfacing to all the pieces. And so that would have been my chance to do that. And because I wasn't using the fusible, I totally forgot that I have this one piece I needed to deal with. In a way, it's kind of good, um, except I would have liked to have stitched it to the flannel completely, and I did kind of put it on there. But now it's not visible to the outside, which is great. All right, so let's see here. Sorry, my foot's on the pedal. Can you tell? <laughs> I'm going to roll this up like this. I'm gonna start on the bottom right here and I'm gonna go around. So what I'm aiming for personally is the a parallel distance to the seam right here. I'm gonna try and, the thing is when you get close to thing, those thicknesses, your presser foot is gonna wanna stop before you get there, before your needle gets there. So um, you have to be careful with that. I'm gonna just see how mine's gonna do. All right, let's do it. Enough lollygagging. 
See my machine's sewing the leather no problem at all. I have a size uh, 18 needle in. I'm gonna walk my needle right here. Now I could, I could do two rows right here. I think I saw that in one of the pictures. In fact, I might do that. I really want my start and stop to be near each other though, you know? But I just feel like this is the point of stress. So you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go across. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll think I can I'm gonna double stitch this. I'm actually for the most part hitting the same exact hole I just did. See how I did. So I, I was able to get right back into the exact same holes on those. And so then we'll pull these, let's pull our tape off. She says if you use the suede um, side up that you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting the tape off, I think is how I understood what she was trying to say. Oh yeah, so it is taking off a little bit of the finish of the leather though, the tape. Yikes. The good thing about um, a jacket with a lining, it seems kind of like, like when you sew it, it's permanent. Like that's how it's gonna be forever, right? You can't do anything, make adjustments, but that's not true. Like when, you're, when you go to a tailor, they are tailoring coats all the time that are fully lined um, and that you're able to open up your lining and make adjustments. Especially like say your cuffs um, get really dirty I've done, I, or um, along the fold, it gets so threadbare that it's kind of like a tear, you know, a crease. Okay, I'm not using tape on the others. I'm not using tape on the others just because I feel like it's hurting the leather. So what I was trying, gonna say is, you could go back and replace your toggles if you ever needed to, you know? Will you want to? Probably not, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just put this tape on here, so that's why I wanna pull it off right away. But, um, I'm scared to hurt it. So how are you guys today? Are you guys, are you guys gonna have a relaxing weekend or, or what are you guys doing? All right, I'm leaving, I'm leaving that for now. I can see a piece of the tape from the backside poking through, so I'm just gonna trim that off. See that right there? I'm not sure about this leather. I can't get this piece right here. All right, I'm gonna leave that for now. So I'm gonna pull my thread to the back. The heck. 
this was my first time sewing with the chocolate. Apparently I didn't um, do my test stitch first. Okay, so I find if I give it a little tug, it usually will pull it to the back like that. So now we have our start and stop threads on the back. And we can just tie them up. Like this. I don't know. I don't know about this leather. You're off 10 days. Oh my gosh. Hi, Deb. Yeah, I'm that's a good idea. I don't I don't have any. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's a good idea though. And they also say um like a, a a fabric glue as well. Yeah, exactly, Rachel. That's what you're saying because of the wheelchair, right? Yeah. The little pieces of tape on my fingertips. All right, let's do um another one. And I'm not I'm not going to tape this one. I'm gonna trim this tape on the back. I thought I was gonna tape, trim this tape on the back. Maybe this cellophane tape is the way to go. I'm not sure. All right, so, oops. I want it to be the same distance away. And I'm looking at where that pin went in as my measurement like this. Get everything out of the way over here. Otherwise it goes flying. And we'll start. How did I do this? I started right here, right? Okay. All right, let's do it. It's not hard to hold it. Should've just done that in the first place. Hindsight, right? <laughs> right, Rachel? <laughs> Put some leather oil or something in the leather when you're done. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Malin. Hi, brown sugar, I saw you were here early. <laughs> Sorry, I'm concentrating. I'm not apologizing for concentrating, I'm just apologizing for being quiet. All right. One more of these. Has anyone else sewn toggles before? I made some with a piece of leather once. Oh, they weren't toggles. I made buckles, that's what it was, on a little plaid skirt. God, that skirt, that's like one thing I still have that I made a long time ago that doesn't fit me, because I really liked it. <laughs> 
Um, I put the skirt on the bias. Oh, it's the cutest brown and blue plaid fabric. That fabric store was so good. Um, and so I cut some leather in kind of like a swirl and then on each side of the skirt and then and it buckled. It was kind of like a fashion version of a kilt. But I also didn't pleat it. I just made it A-line. Oh, to be 24 still, you know? For the most part, I'm I'm able to get right into the same exact holes. All right, so we have the toggles on this side sewn. Makes it look professional though, doesn't it? Hey Sherry, how's it going? Barbara, did you comment something about, um, I only saw the first like, like four words of your comment that popped up on my um, um, phone. Were you gonna? Were you commenting on the fact that when I said Sherry last time, my series came on? Because yeah, that does happen. And when I say seriously, I'm trying. I'm hoping it doesn't come on right now. So I just kind of give this a little pull like this, and that's how I get the thread to come to the back. Um, I'm really good at that, only because this is how I when I machine sew buttons on. I do a hybrid, so I machine sew the button on, and then I pull the threads to the back and I hand tie them. Because if you just clip the thread, you can't clip the thread in and it be at the bottom of the hole under the button. So then you just see this little cut thread right at the top of your buttonhole, but the hole of the button. And so um, I've gotten really good at just pulling them to the back, and I've learned that if you just kind of give these a tug like this, you'll start seeing a little bit of looseness, and then you can just pull that stitch. It's the loop. Like that. Like this. Yeah, exactly, Barbara. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think they did a really good job of picking out the color. I like the contrast too. It looks good. Okay. All right. Right, Barbara? <laughs> So I activated on yours, because that's funny. I activated it on mine, and I have to turn it off. It happens a lot when I'm sitting in my chair talking to someone at home. It's the only place it happens. Maybe it's because it's the only time I'm talking to someone. Because at work, I'm not. That's really funny. <laughs> I have The thing is, I have that turned off on my phone. Like, if I were to say the magic words to turn her on, um, I, it shouldn't come on because I turned that off because it was happening so much that at, at the wrong time that I um, got rid of it. But it still happens when I'm streaming pretty most often. I'm going to make this a little longer, this tail. I'm finding one of those is always really short when I start. All right, so same thing. I'm going to start at the bottom, I think. And that's what I did, I went towards the thingy, right? Okay, the center, the thingy. I'm going um, counterclockwise this time. I'm actually gonna double check this because I think I was at the wrong pin. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think I'm at the wrong pin. Better check now. <laughs> So if those were buttoned, I mean zipped. Yeah, look at that. I thought so. So now I really gotta be good about getting into those um, holes or I have that spare, which is great. I haven't used my steam ripper yet. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, it's like a little bit higher. I'm looking at the um, zipper band and also the yoke seam here. And more importantly, this right here, this edge. That's how I kind of knew. Fine melon, I'll take it. All right, here we go. I can't see, it's so dark. It's my problem right now. That's where my all is when I ask. It's on the ground now. Okay, so let's see. This time let's follow the pin. I had followed the bottom of the pin. That's why I knew when I saw it, I was like, ooh, that's in the wrong spot. That's how I knew. I mean, um, I think that these are easier than putting buttons and buttonholes in and faster. 
you know? Maybe all clothes should have toggles. Yeah, exactly, Terry. One more. I really hope I'm not catching the seam allowance in there because I'm, I need it later on to attach the lining, you know? I'm so close to it. This time it kind of pushed me away a little bit because uh, it's probably not trimmed right here as much. Oh yeah, that one doesn't look as good. Oh yeah, the, the heel lift is really nice for something like this. All right, okay. Oh my, Mullen. <laughs> Remember if you have that little arm on your bobbin case to thread it, because that was that's huge. That's made such a huge difference on mine. When you guys told me about that, that was a game changer. I'm sure I knew it somewhere along the line or someone had said it, but I had never, like it never was something I did. So I never really tried it out. That really sealed the deal. This time it's not pulling. Oh, here it is right here. This little loop right here. And this little loop. You really gotta pull it to get, you have to see the, the loop. This one right here, okay. Not very exciting today, is it guys? Sorry about that. We gotta, we gotta kind of, we have to fix this now though, because we're about to line it. The, the great part is when you're done with your coat, you're actually done. Like you don't have to worry about your closure still, you know? So that's kind of cool. I like it when there's a project like that, when you kind of do all the finishing details as you go. It's why like when I knit a sweater, I'm always weaving in my ends. Oh man, I didn't get that very tight. Um, and it's, um, I will even do like little things to 
Just make it so that I can wear it right away, you know? I love that. It's not like finishing a whole project and then you're like, dang, I still have like an hour of work to do. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah, Malin. You got outsmarted, huh? Which one am I missing here? I'm missing this one right here. Which is this one right here. I finished all my Christmas bags yesterday, so that project, it's my, probably one of my oldest um, unfinished projects. Oh shoot, shoot, I can't get this one. Oh, I did get it though, right here. I mean, I have, I definitely have things like, um, cut, uh, you know, things that didn't get sewn with chicken boots, but, um, that's different. Okay. I didn't, I didn't sew the, the seam allowance here, which is great. I was a little worried about that. This one looks like it'll be more straightforward. There's the loop and there's the loop. All right, that's what we want. I think my threads are, my bobbin and my top aren't actually matching. I think that's my problem because um, one, it's always a certain one that is giving me problems and it's lighter weight. So I think the bobbin is not the same as the top. I don't know why it would be like that because I don't usually, have different colors like different i don't have more than one dark chocolate you know all right there we go looks good like when i was up close sewing these i was like oh this one looks a little further away but now i see them they look they look pretty darn good they look like, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I've never examined toggles on another jack, jacket, you know, so. <laughs> oh, you know, Rachel, I feel like I've seen one before. I can't think of where. Is it maybe um, Oliver, Oliver and S? Do I knit my shoulder seams together instead of hand sewing them? Um, I I like grafting sometimes, um, but um, shoulder seams, do I graft shoulder seams? What do I do? I do knit them together. Yeah, 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 I knit them together. Yeah, that's a, uh, and um, the types of sleeves I like to do are um, where you can, um, uh, you pick up the stitches around the armhole and then you knit from the cap and go back and forth like this and then join into the circle at the underarm bicep and then go down. That sleeve fits the best and is the easiest to, to knit. I really don't like doing sleeves flat though at all. All right. Carrying on, we're going to sew our um, shoulder seams and our side seams together. We have our back here. The toggles look so professional. That is really nice of you, Rachel. That's a great idea. I know there's a lot of hat making efforts in the world, which I think are great. Um, the coats would be great. I've just, I've just been thinking so much like I mean, I'm definitely environmentally conscious, but this isn't why I'm thinking this. I mean, it kind of is why I'm thinking this way, but 
especially after packing Maggie up and kind of having to downsize her a little bit. She when we when we moved her here, we didn't really have to downsize her much because she already lived in a little apartment, and she had by herself for a really long time. And she's really frugal, and you know, she has a lot of knickknacks. And that's about it, and and books. She uh, is a political junkie. So her all her books, and she like I said, she's a retired librarian. So the books, yeah, but. So this time she went from a one bedroom to a studio. So I feel like when you're already going from a really small one bedroom to a studio, you've already pared down, <laughs> you know? And we're still paring her down, but it's like the type of stuff that she has isn't the type of stuff most people want, right? Because we're so accustomed to wanting the newest and latest and whatever looks the way we want and stuff like that, you know? So it just makes me think about how there's so much unused stuff in the world, you know? Like she has these like amazing coats. Some of them are fur, <laughs> um, but like some of her other coats were just, like she really had a thing for Pendleton. So she has a lot of Pendleton things. Um, and it just made me think like, like she's not my size, she's really small, but it just made me think like, there's so much stuff in the world. We have so many things and, and I'm just as guilty of having those things too, you know? So it's like, I wish our, 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 uh, our fashion lasted a lot longer, you know? I'm going to match up my fabric. I'm going to focus on that. You can see my Horse hair, my flannel, even on the front, they're a little bigger now. I don't know why that is. I would have thought the opposite. I'm not quite on the seam allowance there, so I'm going to correct this. What was that noise? There were all of a sudden there were some really weird alarms going off outside right before I went live. I got a little paranoid. I was like, yeah, I'm locking the door. I'm at the back of a lot and no one's here on the weekends. There's probably some people way back there, but I don't know them and I don't know what their schedule is. So I was like, ooh. So now every little noise, I'm like, what's that? After Dante the Rottweiler gave us that scare that day. <laughs> Did I tell you that Rottweiler one day I was leaving? And so ever since the person came in here and stole my wallet, I put a dog fence up at the door so that people don't just walk in. They have to stop and um, kind of pause because of the dog gate and they'll lean over and be like, hello, <laughs> you know? And it's actually working like a charm because I had one guy trying to come in. I was like, I just told you I'm not them. You need to go that way, you know? And, um, but one night I opened the door and then I went and made sure my heater was off and then I came back and Dante, that gigantic Rottweiler was sitting there pitch black behind him and he's black his little face over the gate looking at me all happy and I could barely see him. I was just like, oh my goodness, Dante, man, you're always sneaking up on me. Um, and then he was like all about my truck and maybe, hey, could I get in your truck maybe? You know, what a big love bug. Look at, isn't this crazy? All these fabrics getting bigger and bigger. Why? The wool's not getting smaller, right? I haven't been doing anything to it. Oh, okay, well that looks better. Okay. This is why the fusible might give you a little less. You'll be able to see it. Peekaboo pattern shop. Oh, that sounds cute. I checked out that um, Forrester coat that Bryant's going to make by, what was it called? Twig and, what was it called again? <laughs> it's a good looking coat. I looked up the hashtag. All right, side seams. Coats are never very good looking on the inside, are they? Okay, I 
I get it started and now I'm gonna I'm gonna get it arranged. Um, I'm also gonna be conscious of this seam where we attach the lower portion of the jacket to this mid portion here. So Malin, are you are, are you almost to your button stage? You sound like you're really close. I'm just looking at this seam right here, making sure it matches right there. Twig and tail. I was gonna say tail, but I wasn't sure. Oh, cool. They are a pattern company, right? You know, Rachel, you I also you might check somewhere like um, the fold line or pattern review. Because at least you'll see, not only will you see um, maybe the coat you're looking for, but if people have made it and what they think. Isn't Minerva.com like that too? There's just a lot of places to go for this kind of information. Or Textilia. Textilia is another one. I feel like the fold line... Wait, does the fold line only talk about the patterns they carry, though? You can... Um, my jacket right here is kind of hanging out, and I don't want to lose any of my extra that I added. Kind of walk in my foot because you know the fabric the wool is so squishy that it means that this flannel is becoming a little bit bigger see that seam looks i feel like i could do a little better on that let's see how it looks yeah it didn't really match it right there i think what i'm going to do is go up Right? Isn't that the way I'm having trouble? What could I do? Let's see. This one needs to go down. So if I do that side up, that probably wouldn't be a good idea. This one needs to go up. So if I went from the bottom up, that might help. Let me, uh, let me confuse myself a little bit here. Nice, Malin. Home stretch. You're just doing a little bit each day, kind of chipping away at it. That's just the best way to do those bigger projects, you know, especially if you're not really needing it right away. I want to, I actually want to increase my, or decrease my seam allowance through here. I'm going to um, take out a lot of this. Sorry, guys. I told myself I kind of wanted to do that. Really because I added the two and the three inches in the waist and the hip. And um, if anything, this person I think would like it a little bigger rather than spot on. Because they have to wear such warm things underneath, you know. So I'm going to just give myself that chance. I don't always recommend doing that, but um, I think this coat will be great to do that on because of the general sh uh, sh uh, silhouette. Yeah, I totally agree. Like chipping away at things, that was my hardest lesson when I had my daughter 17 years ago was not getting to just sit down, start and finish a project all at one time. That was really, really hard for me. Um, 
And I think it's like that classic thing, you know, like when you're pregnant, people were like, oh, this is so great. She can come to work with you. That's just a bunch of BS. And I don't think that should ever tell them. Like people should never say, that's so great. You can bring your baby to work with you. First of all, work is hard enough. You, you really don't need to be caring for a human being at the exact same time. You're also trying to get something done with your head screwed on straight, you know? I know it's possible. I totally know people do it. I know it's just a thing. It's also not very fair. <laughs> so um, if it's small doses, fine. But it's just not, it's not fair to you and it's not fair to the kid because it's just like you're doing everything halfway, you know? So I would get like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, like if she was napping or... Um, that was pretty much it. My kid wasn't one of those self entertainers. So, you know, I would get 20 minutes as opposed to having 10 hours. So <laughs> it was an adjustment mentally as well as like how my work did. But once I, I never really let it go it, in the beginning, like it took years. But once I got used to that, my work got better because I chipped away at it. You know, I would leave and be like, I'd be so disappointed to leave, right? 20 minutes felt like a blink, you know? And I'd be like, oh, she woke up and I'd have to go, you know, I have to go get her. And when I would come back the next time, I would look at it with fresh eyes. I'd be like, oh, wow, I like this or I don't like this, you know? Or, oh, what if I did this? You know, it made my work better. Oh, I'm just losing this jacket over the side of the the table and I don't want it to hit the floor. Even though I swept right before, I just, you know, I don't want to hit the floor. I'm just clipping this seam right here. So sometimes when I have these really finicky spots that I really want to match, I will sometimes pre-sew them, like right now. So this is at an angle like this and this, the seam comes like this and the side seam goes like this, right? So I'm exaggerating with my hands. So you can't just line up the tip right here. You have to make sure that on the seam line, that's what's happening, right? That you're getting it right on there. And it's really thick. So what it wants to do is kind of like push to one side or the other. Yeah, Rachel, um, the other, you might also look um, at, what's that? Um, company is the rain is those does the rain shed have patterns what's the name of their patterns i made their cagoule once look on the the rain shed website rachel i think that there's some children's outdoor things on there and at least you would know what to look for because they are pretty simple to sew or stretch and sew if you're doing like fleece stuff you might find something All right, so I just pinned it above and below. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit narrower of a seam allowance as I get to that. Let me see how I did when I started though. All right. It's a lot of layers, man. started this coat last week you guys when I was like let's put off our sleeve drafts <laughs> and then um I throw in through in the purse you know I can feel like I feel this is pushing already I think I got it better this time but we'll see
Yeah, I know what you mean, Rachel. That's not too bad. I might zip it up to keep it a little more tame. It's like pulling on my cords. All right, so let's see here. Just looking at the seam first. I feel like maybe I should move this a little bit higher because when I come down it, it will just push it anyway, you know? You know, there needs to be a Christmas cookie exchange. Or someone at my husband's work needs to make Christmas cookies and then, and then give them to him. <laughs> yeah, I am shallow that way. I really want Christmas cookies. a favor and stitch down your inner lining around all the perimeters. You like yourself, right? You know, just do it. I didn't want to because I really didn't want to get any pulling of because of the, um, I don't know why I didn't do it. Honestly, I don't have a good reason. I just don't. I was probably trying to save time, which it doesn't. But my bottom, my feed dog, so this, this started right here, perfectly lined up. But what happens, and I've said this before, is my feed dogs are pulling and my presser foot's pressure, pressing, pushing forward, right? And it gets misaligned when it's really thick like this. All right, let's see how I did on this one. Oof. You guys think right exactly Rachel I mean you know I know that there's those those parents that are like if I send my kid to school in a jacket they'll lose it and I have been that parent with that kid and she's lost good coats like a couple times I know a little kid took the coat and I was like I know that kid, I know that kid's family. I'm not even gonna say a word because they need a coat. But my daughter was heartbroken because I had special ordered it for her. It was like her birthday gift and she wanted it. And it was very unique. <laughs> and so, you know, it was a hard one. I couldn't really explain to her why I didn't say anything. But at the same time, there's kids that are cold. You know, they really need, they run like 10 degrees warmer, but still. You guys, I, I'm having trouble getting this matched because of the thickness. I think I'm going to let it go, which kind of pains me to do, but I feel like I could spend an hour trying to get it right. And this one's right here. See, it's like that little blump right there, you know? Let's see how it's looking, though. Yeah, very cozy. Yeah. They're fine, Sherry, thanks. That's what I needed to see. <laughs> you know what I wanted to hear. That was very warm, said the Californian. <laughs> Okay, so we are getting into the fun stuff now. Um, for anyone following, I am now on page 22. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assemble the sleeves and sew them on, but I'm not gonna go much further 
than that with the sleeves because there's going to be an adjustment later. So this is the sleeve facing and here's the sleeve lining. I'm going to set those aside right now. Got all my pattern pieces like organized on my little on my little cart right here. See? And they're like laid out exactly how I'm going. Can you see it? See? Uh, like that. On the bottom is all the pattern pieces we're done with. When you have something this big, it's just really good to lay out all your pieces, you know? Awesome, Sherry, thanks. <laughs> all right, so let's see. This is the right side. That's the right side. I should have laid these out. <laughs> nah. She don't need to bake me cookies. Hopefully this warms her up, right? This is the right side. At least putting the inner lining down makes it so that I don't confuse the um, right and the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, so here we go. These are both the right side. And just so you know, I, it is flannel, but I'm putting the fuzzy side towards the coat so that it's uh, the lining is as slippery as possible when it runs over it. They won't feel the fuzzy layer anyway, so it was a way to, it was just a strategy. It might not even make a difference, but um, that's why you're not seeing the cute stripe. So. Pixie pea coat sounds cute. Get rid of all these little chunks. That's the kind of thing that you feel. I had this one, what was that? I had a coat, what was that? And I could feel something breaking down inside, you know? So just starting with none of those lumps and bumps. Now I have a wrinkle on my flannel too. I think I'm gonna iron those. I don't want those wrinkles to feel through, you know? So let's do that. I'm so far only using this little tiny mat as a place to set my iron right here, but it's kind of handy so I don't accidentally set it like one corner on the mat and then on the table and it falls, you know? I'm gonna put it on a wool setting. Yeah, right, Sherry? That is so uncomfortable. 
Yeah, like hand knit sweaters that fill after a while. Like, don't sell me a sweater quantity of yarn if it's going to pill. Just, just don't. It's wrong. Yeah, I've had flannel sheets to that, but they were also, it was time to retire them and they were really uncomfortable. <laughs> like, yep, these are gone. I saw Jenny from Cashmerette made this coat. I don't know when she did it. I don't know how old the blog post was, but um, I found it by accident when I was Googling for the sleeve length. And um, she had some really great tips on there and she even got some like tools, treated herself to some tools to, buy, to make it. Um, and uh, what was the one thing I thought was really interesting? I can't remember what it was. What made me think of her? Well, she also said chipping away at it was really key for her. Um, my thing right now is I don't really feel like um, the wool is very crisp on the placket edge right here. This right here. I feel like this will break in, but I really want to stitch it down, you know? That's my only thing. You know what I mean? I, I really like mine, Sherry, but I've been using the same iron for a really long time and I just bought a whole new one that's exactly the same. I got it at Target for 80 bucks. So there are a, real, a lot of really, there's a lot of irons to choose from now. That's what I've learned about making a choice about an iron. Um, and I went for the Rowenta just because I knew it really well and that, you know, they do say that the steam is really good on it and I think as a garment sewist that's really important. So I'm not a quilter, and I think that there's a lot more information about irons out there for quilters than there are for garment sewists. So that's what I would say about that, is make sure that the use you're looking for is covered in the iron. You know? I know there's two notches on one. Oh, here it is. Okay, so it's this curved edge that gets the curved edge. All right, yeah, so this one, I didn't get both notches transferred. All right, I'm gonna start from the bottom and go up. So when I, when I alter this person's sleeve length, um, I'm probably gonna need to taper it. Because if I shorten it this much, this m amount right here is much smaller than right here. So I wouldn't want them to look like, <laughs> like stove pipes, you know? So that's the one thing I'm gonna just make sure is, um, the right circumference. All right, so you're gonna you're gonna line this up with the seam line. So a half inch in, 
from here. Let's just visually look at it. Half inch in right here, puts that point right there. That's the seam juncture. So I'm gonna put this line up this edge to that line right there, there and there. And then that way I know that that is the half inch seam allowance. We'll even pin it, non-negotiable. Cause I think we do some easing between these notches here. Maybe not. They may just be a place to denote where you are putting um, the elbow. Way you get a nice smooth transition there right here yeah. we've talked a lot about irons lately sherry you might ask others here um like Jenny talked about she got a gravity feed iron based on someone else's review and then she ended up not liking it <clears throat> and she's thinking about getting a different one. And I don't know how long ago that blog post was, but Terry re really loves hers. And I know that there's a couple of brands out there that are really, really popular right now, like the ones that lift up and stuff like that. The vacuum table is very intriguing to me because I know that that kind of thing sounds not useful like first of all I have to look at things like that and go well if they made it it must be useful because it's really common in like the tailoring and, and garment industry you know and um and then my friend got one that she bought from a factory going out of business and I tried it and I was like oh I get it because you're spending a lot less time arranging things on the ironing board you just put it on there and the ironing board's kind of helping you make it as flat as possible so that was kind of a cool thing, but that was also a really expensive iron that she just luckily got because the factory was going out of business. Like, so she has this full on industrial <laughs> iron. I wonder if she still has that thing. I know she just moved into a really small place, so I'm not sure she still has it. So I may be going back in here, but look at this tailored sleeve. Look at that, it's pretty great. <laughs> Terry, right? <laughs> Yeah, I wonder how close we are to that, Terry. If where you can, um, like a pattern company can say, custom made to your specs. The thing is, it's the technology's there and it's not even that new. It's been there. <laughs> you, you don't like cutting it out either, Barbara. I used to hate the cutting out. Now I really like it. I feel like it's part, it's the only creative part. It's not, I, that's, I don't like saying a blanket statement like that, but it is part, most, the most creative part of putting your garment together is cutting it out. Cause that's where you make all the decisions, you know, of what you're going to do, technical and aesthetic decisions. So I like that part now, but I used to hate it. I used to hate it so much I would cut out a bunch at once and then by the time I got to sewing one of them I'd be like, what's this, you know? Affordability, Terry. I mean, and you know, the thing is, it's like that kind of technology is right now being utilized in the garment industry, right? So that's the kind of scale they'd have to be selling patterns on to for some, like for some independent, pattern studio to be able to um, 
acquire the software and capability. But yeah, it's it's out there. It's been out there for a while. If you watch, um, I was on the Alvanon website the other day because I, I signed up for their um, their curvy um, curvy pattern class. Is it a pattern class? Well, either way, and it's geared towards anybody who sews clothing. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm going to take this. I'm kind of interested. And it's self-guided. Like, you don't, like, you're not with other people. You can do it whenever you want. And I own it. Kind of like a blueprint thing, I think. I haven't started it yet. But um, I was on their website looking at some of their, just their information and their videos. And they're getting to, the, like, they're working with people to, like, 3d body scan for for the garment industry so obviously that's even another step so if you could body scan yourself and then say i would like the tamarack jacket for my size you know <laughs> that that technology is there it's just that someone like Greenline studio they can't afford to buy that software so this this is the way i look at it as i'm developing this line of patterns right um, I know how much I'm going to sell my patterns for basically because some of the, the pa pattern prices are pretty set in our industry, right? I can't really get away with anything different except less. So I have been doing just the math on it. So say you have a pattern and you decide to sell it for $15 a pattern, right? Do the math on how many patterns a month you would need in order to pay your bills and survive. Like, even if you wanted a, like say you wanted a certain salary per year. So don't forget, you have all of your business expenses, your overhead, you know, plus you, you know, you want your salary, you're coming home. You would have to have so many patterns selling for that amount per month um, that just doing a pattern like that without the software is almost impossible. Like it, the, these companies aren't, aren't doing, they're not millionaires. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm having trouble getting this lined up because the flannel is looking so big. I'm doubting it. I'm just making sure. So, I mean, if you wanted, say the pattern was, you have $15, and you, if you could sell 80 of those patterns a month, say you have sold 100 of those patterns a month, you know, that's only, you know, $1,500 a month. That was really not that much, you know? That's one pattern that you have to sell every month. You'd have to sell 100 of that one pattern every single month plus all your others. So it's a it's a lot to ask. So there's no way these companies can afford to have software like that. Having a CAD program is different because it's a flat rate and then if they stay with the company, they get the updates for for free for a certain number of years and then after some num certain number of years the uh, CAD company asks you to rebuy into the software or get no updates anymore. So that's what happened to mine. Mine aged out. It aged out of my computer and my updates because I didn't have enough clients. Which dress form website, Barbara? Bootstrap, maybe? I'm just going to clip this off. So yeah, that's why we don't have that software yet. Now, if people could pool their resources and share it, that would be another thing. But even that is really hard because um, I know a freelance pattern drafter that I've used for years to do um, printouts for me before there were PDF plotting services because there weren't there weren't those services until recently. Like, because you know PDF patterns are pretty new, and I would have to have a printout gigantic plots, um, markers and things for current companies. And I didn't have a, I only had a 36 inch wide plotter, not a 70 inch wide plotter. 
So I would occasionally talk to her. She had three, I think three different CAD programs and she ran them simultaneously. Um, that's what she had to do to have the number of clients that she had. So, um, she, you know, so she was buying into three different CAD programs plus digitizing software and stuff like that. So, because all her clients, because she probably had some really big clients and really small clients. So, all right, where are we at? What are we doing, man? All right, so we're going to set our sleeves on. But yeah, if you want to feel better about spending what you do on a pattern to a company, I would definitely do the math on what they're actually making. <laughs> I was kind of shocked. I'm going to um, grade these seams, actually. I have little tucks in my flannel, but it's not in the wool. The wool is just so squishy. My jacket looks so messy on the inside. What can I say? I am just not a jacket maker. You know? Yeah, I don't think so, Terry. It's because of the sheer number of sales they would need. They would probably need, you know, X number of people buying into that um, so regularly to be able to pay for it. And just the sheer nightmare of um, there would be limitations to it and that would really make people mad until they got better and better at um, configuring the software because that not only would they have to have the pattern in different size ranges, um, not every pattern will respond to the custom thing. You'd have to stick to really simple silhouettes for a while to just try it out. So there would be that as well. And you know what they're trying to do probably in my, in, 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 in like what I would assume is they're trying to right now probably offer as many, um, styles as possible per year so you have the greatest number of um selection so if they did that if they had like this custom range it would probably be four styles you know it would be really small the software's been out for a while i've used some of it but it wasn't like that it wasn't like the scanning the scanning thing's newer but um yeah, because there's software called Made to Measure as well. Um, there's a bun been a bunch of them, but they also, you know, they're, they're only as good as they are, right? So some are better than others. But I think Barbara's right. I think Bootstrap does that. We have to check it out. Maybe I'm wrong about all this. I don't know. Sometimes I, what I know is so outdated. <laughs> I know I know some stuff, but some of it's a little outdated probably. Did I, I trimmed this one, right? Before I turned it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, Terry. Do you have a um, fabric store near you? This sleeve feels kind of tight, to be honest. You know? Oh, it's folded in. Okay, that's better. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Oh, that's a bummer, Terry. I know something, some like thing happened with my local fabric store, and it's been um, 
harder to go there lately and it's such a bummer because they were actually starting to get a really great um like a fab the uh, garment sewing fabric selection so i'm kind of bummed by that wait this is i was just looking at the wrong wait this is the back of the sleeve yeah 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 so this is it's so funny i was just holding i was like wait that doesn't work i have two lefts all right so i'm gonna check this out see how much gathers I'm going to need. Does this one go here? Yeah, goes there. Yeah, yeah, fabric stores, man. It is tough. Do I push my seam allowances? Right side of the coat and sleeve facing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so you press the seams. It looks like towards the uh, underarm piece, but mine want to sit open, and I'm going to do that because that'll be nice and flat. I'm going to put a couple layers of uh, rows of gathering stitches in here. that stitch length long but it doesn't look that long yeah I kind of yeah you just kind of make like an outing of it I'm gonna go fabric shopping with my friend here right after Christmas we're just gonna drive around when I went to that quilt show I was kind of surprised at the number of fabric stores kind of in our, our region like in our county You guys really think the flannel is relaxing? Does it do that? Look at that. Mm -hmm. I don't like how ripply it looks. I don't like how inaccurate it looks. I'm only putting in two rows because the instructions say to, but I don't normally. So hopefully that'll be okay. Um, we're gonna do this one first, actually. Yeah, I would think the wool would be doing that, you know, relaxing because it feels kind of loose, you know? It's not, re re it's not relaxing at the same rate as the flannel. I'll have to look at the Palmer plush. How, how do you go about looking at the Palmer plush? Is it a book or only an online thing, Rachel? Oh man, this is hard. I may need to back it off over the seam. I just don't have much to grab onto on this side, on that side. Dang, I don't have much to grab onto this side. Your one line fabric store, what is that? You've been saving hard and sewing a lot to be able to launch your little one line. What, what do you mean, one line? Is it your line that you designed or are you only carrying one line? 
Oh, uh, okay, okay. You have the book, okay. Yeah, see, that like that's not something you're, I'm going to learn in um, college or the garment industry, custom. I know how to fit things, and I know the fit issues to deal with. Like, we, we still deal with it because your fit models come in and stuff like that. All right, I'm backing this off of the seam. I can't, I can't get past this seam. It's too much, it's too thick. Honestly, just one row of stitching is probably only gonna work too. It's just too thick. The instructions don't know I did an interlining. Oh, I, that's what I was gonna say is Jenny from Cash and Rent did thin slit for her interlining. Oh, okay, Barbara. They recently redid the book. Online, okay. I have both Rachel's responding online. So, but Rachel Ellis, like, what do you mean it's like a one-line fabric store? What does one line mean? Oh, online, that's what you mean, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I get it, I get it. <laughs> That's cool, congratulations. You're gonna have to tell us all about it. When you're ready, we can uh, we can check it out for you and test it out. Being someone who has had to launch a um, online store, I know how much work that goes into it. Just keeping up my project descriptions is a lot of work, right? Um, and my, my unsolicited advice is just when you're close to getting ready to launch it and you keep going, oh, do I launch it today? Do I launch it? Just launch it because here, this is the truth. Nobody knows you launched it and you can look at it online. No one's gonna like flood your site and check it, you know, like use it or use it wrong. You can buy stuff from yourself and refund yourself. You can kind of see how it works. Just launch it and then once you find it's comfortable, then you tell the world, you know what I mean? Yeah, what kind of fabric? <laughs> Yeah, what kinds? That's exciting. All right, so we have one sleeve here. I would really like to have both rows going so I have a nice flat head of my sleeve, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. I like to, I really like pulling them at the same rate, but pulling two rows was not working out. That's a lot of work. There's a gal uh, locally here who's trying to get some investors together to start a uh, fabric store. I really want her to pull it off. She's really good at fabric buying. She really knows what she's doing. Um, but you know, it's not like you go into selling fabric because you want to be a millionaire. So it, it, she does have to, that's the thing. The online thing is the smartest way to go about it. And I know she's going to have to cater to quilters at first. So. Yeah, exactly, Rachel. Yeah, I've had friends. I had two other friends that know her as well. Look at the doing the exact same thing. And they were, they've been really researching it too. And they were finding that kits like just focusing on kits and like limited edition club type things was going to be the most um, easy way to sell through their fabrics and stuff. This is the front of my sleeve. This is the back of my sleeve. So it is the, the sleeve right here. So um, I'm setting on a sleeve like I do for lots of things. There's not much different with this. Um, I kind of want to open my seams up though because of the bulk of these. I think you're supposed to push these one way. I am going to open mine up. Yeah, so cool. But this is the same technique I would do like on the shirt I'm wearing, you know, the archer button up. I would, I would totally, I'd put only one row in I would only do it um, to the notches on this kind of shirt. This this one right here is a little different. I am gonna pin it a little bit because um, of the thickness and then check it out.
the notches don't go to the yoke line. I keep thinking they do, and then I'm like, ooh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, fabric sellers on Etsy. I feel like um, that's a good place to see how some of those smaller companies do it. Yikes, these pins keep pulling, poking me really bad. Okay, I need to put more gathers in. I was thinking this gal locally, she has a ton of support for her fabric store. Um, but I know that the support she has isn't in the, in the way of huge angel investors, right? So I, I was actually thinking about her and I was thinking, you know, she could probably do some sort of crowdfunding thing. I'm not a big proponent of crowdfunding. I will be honest. I, I It's not like I'm down on it, but I do not feel like it is the a good way to finance your business. I have a lot of feelings and thoughts about it. If you ever want to talk about it, let me know. I, I don't want to harsh on anyone's like parade for it. My husband loves supporting uh, people on like Indiegogo and Kickstarter. He loves it. Um, me, I'm a little bit, I have policies on what I will fund. So um, like I will not give someone money if it's toward their, um, their uh, payroll they really need to be able to make money to pay their people <laughs> so because that crowdfunding is temporary but i do feel like you can do something like a store opening if you had you could make them investors by giving them like a discount code or something like that you know i would happily give her a chunk of money to open a fabric store all that way so oh that's so great that's great, Rachel. I mean, sounds like you have a lot going for it. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I think it was uh, Rachel Meyer who was suggesting that to you, Terry. Ow! All right, I'm gonna start sewing these so I can get rid of the pins. I know you're gonna say, use the clover clips. They're not deep enough. Okay. This coat's getting big. And this, uh, like putting the sleeves on is about as far as I'll go with the sleeves and then I'm gonna make sure I know the length before I adjust them. I'm just gonna adjust them right on the coat. Open up and up the seams, getting it all flat. <laughs> what, what is this right here? Oh, this is the yoke. Okay, that seam goes up. This one goes... I'm getting to my gathers. So I'm going to sew just on the inside. You don't want any tucks in your coat seam. It looks like I have some, but I'm going to make sure that I don't have any when I sew it. I'm going to sew just to the left of the gathering stitch. I'm having to like arrange the coat and kind of twist it like this, untwist it as I'm going around the armhole. Yeah, that's really cool, Terry. You're gonna, is your is your pea coat for you? I thought you just finished the pea coat. What are you making now? Are you making another coat, Terry? OK, 
Okay, I'm back at the beginning almost. Got all the pins out. All right, and so we have our sleeve here. Maybe that is supposed to, I don't think that's supposed to line up. That one does. It looks like it does, but it didn't in the inside. So all those gathers give you this nice little rolled sleeve, sleeve cap. Um, I know some people put a sleeve header in there, I think, like right here. And I don't know much about that, to be honest. So, Oh, you're making slacks. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's you need this right here to make it fit over your arm. So okay, let's do our other sleeve. What time is it? Okay. I'm going for a little while longer, you guys. I'm going to try and get as much of this done as possible today. So we're kind of towards, we're almost thin. Ooh, cool, Rachel. That's awesome. You have to share it with us when you do. <laughs> Terry. Terry's bargaining now. <laughs> I know, I'd happily do all the sewing. I don't know, I like all of it. What don't I like? I, I'm finding, oh, look at this. I got a little bit of flannel in the gathering stitch. I'm finding that I'm really wanting, I just want someone to tell me what to sew. I just wanna be busy, you know? I'm, I'm like that kind of person that wants to be busy. And I, I know, I don't know how to put it. I, I really like a challenge or something unique, very unique. And then the space to work on it. And I don't typically like, you just never know like what people are going to be really interested in, like in this format. If it were just personal stuff, I could do whatever I want, right? I could just sit there and like my friend showed me her friend's, um, picture of a archer button up and then she she's also a quilter the gal who made it and she put a little quilted like pieced together a little like star in the corner of the yoke on the back it was really cute and I was like oh that's very inspiring to me I think next year my projects for so so I think will be a little more not all of them, but some will be more unique and more experimental and more in depth. And I don't, I'm not sure that'll be necessarily a great thing for viewers um, as far as like usability for them. So I, I can't do it all, all, you know, all the time, but it's definitely something I want because I don't want, you know, I don't want more clothes, right? So I'd rather be really, really like do some really unique and intentional things than, um, crank out a bunch of stuff right like we know we made 53 things together on camera and you know it's like some people would be like all right we're gonna go for 75 this year but no I'd rather go for less you know okay I just can't do two rows at once that's just how this is one is a lot easier with this thickness It's amazing how you can get this many gathers in fabric, especially when you're doing like suit coats and wool and they just get absorbed into the seam and you don't even see the gathers on the outside. It's, it's more forgiving than a, a woven shirt, you know? That's the irony. You would think this would be harder, but it's almost easier. Um, I have, Rachel. I did the um, Thread Theory Designs um, Fairfield shirt last summer. I don't think I did her traditional sleeve placket on that one. Ugh, I just can't get past the seam. This is so annoying. Oh, I didn't want to break it though. All right. 
see if I can get I'm just getting it past the seam and now I can't see my stitches because they're sunk down into this cushy wool This is probably my last coat of the season though. We've made a few. <laughs> yeah, check it out. I just, I think it was in June or July, but it is on my website. So go to soso.live and if you search um, Fairfield, it should come up and then all the links to the videos will be right there. Oh, I'm pulling the wrong one, aren't I? Am I pulling the wrong one? Yep. There you go. There's your what not to do. Don't pull from one side on one end and the inside on the other end because then they lock up. Oh my gosh, an applique monster quilt. Meaning it's monster themed or it's big? You're calling it a monster. <laughs> oh, they are real. Okay, that's a monster quilt. You're gonna be well a well-fitted suit. Oh, that's cool. Slacks not so much. Well, you know, what do you guys think about the idea of if you made something that was able to be tailored and taking it to a tailor and having them do the fitting for you? Don't you feel like that's a possibility? Like this coat, you could probably get it almost all the way done. I could send it. They could take it to a tailor, you know? That's what they're supposed to be able to do. As long as you have the seam allowances and um, ability to get back inside. That's what they do for men, you know? Yeah, it's actual monsters, okay. <laughs> Notches match up nicely. I'm sorry, just whack the camera. It's an idea, Terry. I really am so excited about that dress form because I just, like I keep saying it over and over, but it's true. I can't wait to see the back of me, my lower back. I cannot wait to see my lower back and how things, like what the heck's going on back there, you know? And a tailor would be able to see all that. They may even just be a good resource for asking. So how would you fit this issue? You know? Pad stitch the lining into the duffel before the construction. Um, I, that's so familiar to me. Are you talking about the, um, the sleeve head? area, Rachel, like I was just mentioning that area, because there is a spot where you do um, make a thread chain and you kind of hook the lining to the body of the coat, you know. So I'm just evenly distributing these gathers between the notch and the um, seam there because it's kind of where they mostly are. And it looks really probably really ruffly 
just like my other one had, but I'm gonna go to the left of the gathering stitch and I'm just trying to make sure that when I get to it, there's no tucks. But when I feel on the other side, it's totally smooth. As long as you're really close to that line of stitching, you shouldn't get any tucks. You guys, you guys have to admit today music would be nice. I didn't have that second cup of coffee, so I'm not like yammering your ear off, so. All right, so let's see here. You definitely also, if you're having to ease a sleeve and you're kind of new to it, make sure you keep all the easing stitches on towards the cap of the sleeve. Just because you have this whole area here, don't shift that there. You don't need it on your underarm. In fact, you want less fabric there, not more. So um, you gotta suck it up, buttercup. Get all those gathers in the cap. I believe in you. This line of gathering stitches is a little far away from the, it's not quite on the half inch seam, unfortunately. Not all the flannel to hold it firm. Hmm. Yeah, Terry, I mean, that's smart. It just depends on the pattern. Some are, some are much harder than others to ease in there. This one wasn't bad at all. But like I said, the, the wool melting is really forgiving too, you know. My only spot that looks a little ruffly. I feel like you could, when you push the seam allowance towards the sleeve, it kind of fills up this spot. And I think like there's some really great pressing techniques to kind of shape this. They have these like uh, ways to get it into the exact shape you need. I don't have a tuck there, but I see that little ripple there. All right, I'm gonna take out my gathering stitch best I can. Um, they actually say to do it, and this time is the one time I'd, I'd probably skip it because it's so thick. <laughs> but I'm like, oh no, they tell me to do it. Oh, there was? Isn't the peacoat have a drop shoulder? So that would make sense because isn't the, the shoulder seam hang off of the shoulder cap on a peacoat? It doesn't sit right on top, right? I'm just gonna trim a little bit here. Is this the gathering stitch, I hope? Or is that the seam? 
Let me make sure I don't have any stitches showing. So, okay, that's great. Good, good, good. Easier to remove them from the inside than the outside. Yeah, that makes sense then. That must have been nice though to have that kind of like, oh, I got this, you know. <laughs> you probably you probably geared up for it and then you were like, oh, this is a little easier. Now it has sleeves. I'm just getting some of my gathering stitches if I can. I always like using my awl instead of my seam ripper for these really thick seams. I'm afraid I'll break my seam ripper, which admittedly I think I've only done once or twice ever. So I may not be able to get all these out. Not if they're gonna keep breaking like this. It is very thick. I don't know if it looks really thick to you guys, but it's a very thick. It's a lot slower, slower sewing when it's this thick. I feel like my seam allowance is a little on the larger side. Night, Rachel. Oh my goodness. Yes. Night, Rachel. Sleep well. <laughs> Maybe we'll see Monday if I'm, I think I'm gonna stream this on Monday. Okay. Let's give it a good shake. like a coat though. Okay. All right, so let's see. Now I'm going to skip all the collar stuff and we're going to go to our our hood. Yay, something small to sew. <laughs> okay. I looked for this pattern piece in the instructions for like a solid five minutes the other day. I found it right off the bat today. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> where does this piece go? <laughs> it goes right here. All right, so. This is the hood facing so that um, the front part of the hood doesn't have lining going all the way to the edge. Thanks, Brooke. Yeah, it's starting It's starting to feel like a coat, which is honestly really gratifying because um, it's, you know, I'm just like, oh man, we're not gonna be done. But at the same time, like, and it, it looks so messy. Coats always look so terrible on the inside, you know? These little pieces that are so symmetrical, like when you see them like this, you're like, hmm, I don't know. Um, I, I really like to be careful when I'm laying them out. So it goes like that. Make sure I don't get it upside down. Especially when I'm a little punchy from sewing this jacket. 
trust nothing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's nice. It's a, it's a rewarding to see that it's, it's showing progress in a good way because, um, I'm feeling like, oh man, it's not done. It's a little messy on the inside, but coats never look great. Like that opium coat, you know, that one didn't look great inside either. And then when it was all done, it was fine. This side. And then we're gonna sew the centerpiece to the hood. Ooh, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna put my label in this. I hope she doesn't mind. <laughs> okay, so here's my hood. So this is the top edge. I'm keeping this piece also. I've sewn enough hoods to know that they can be confusing. This is the top edge. This is the right side and this is the right side. So we'll keep it together. I love they picked up the hood. Hoods are so great. They're like the most instant way to get cozy is to put on a hood, you know? I need to move some stuff here. I like very little stuff here. <laughs> when it starts getting rattly, I'm like, uh oh. All right, where's um, a notch or two? Here's a notch, here's a notch. Oh, here, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, okay. And I think I'm one of those people that my neck gets cold really easily. So putting on a hood or a hat, yeah, like a hat is great, but as soon as I put a hood on, maybe it's because I've always, I've had long hair more of my life. Cause anytime I have short hair, I freeze, you know? My mom told me um, that uh, my sister's husband is back like he he goes on deployment mid january for six months he's in the navy um but he, they've been gone for a bit and um they didn't think he'd be back for christmas so when they got he got home a day early that he told them oh we'll be home tomorrow and then they came the like that day or something so that's kind of cool kids were so excited she said that um they were like running around the house so much and she was like come on get your shoes on so we can go get him <laughs> it was pretty funny i'm really glad he'll be home while they're out of school and she's gonna miss the rest of the school year you know dang look at that why am i having so much trouble look at this I'm going to do it from the hood. I was, I really wanted to do from the top of the hood that way and the same on the other side, but um, I don't think I could do it. I'm going to do it from the hood piece instead, the center hood piece. I was having an easier time easing this in to this curve. Look at that. What the heck? Hmm. the heck something's fishy it's a symmetrical piece yeah 
Yeah, exactly, Terry. Was he in the Navy as well? They're, they're, um, they're a lot younger than me. But he's been in a while now. So I think... Like, even though they're, like, mid-30s, I think he can retire in, like, five years or something like that. I don't, I don't really know. Navy, yeah. Where were you stationed at, Terry? On the East Coast? It is really cool, like, when he's away. He can't say, obviously, where he's going, but he can say where he's been. And, um, you know, and they don't get to talk very often either. It's not like you can, like, text and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and, uh... He has been all over the world, and he's a musician, like a natural musician, and so he loves collecting musical instruments from all over the world. He gets some really cool things. I think that's really neat. I couldn't get these notches to match when I did it, so I just thought, oh, I'll make them the same off on each side, but I can't even get them to be the same off. It's like worse. I just want to see, like, this kind of pattern piece. Look at this. So that's the top edge, and that's the bottom, the neck edge. It is so similar that you really need a, um, like, a center notch right here. So you know that that's the neck. That's why I was really careful when I picked it up. But they're they're really not much different. Okay, so. Okay, so that's how that goes. The heck? Why? Uh, I wonder if it's just because of this curve. So if I put this one about five-eighths of an inch past that notch like that. <laughs> oh, okay, Terry, yeah. Yeah, like, I I don't think he at all ex planned on staying in past the initial at all. Um, I think it, su it surprised him that he stayed in. At one point, he was going for his nursing degree or something. I don't remember what. He's such a creative guy. And he and his twin brother enlisted at the same time. Um, they're not identical twins, but it's kind of fun. But they, they're still both still in it. Okay, so this notch here is like a half inch above this one. So if I can get this one here, that would be in the same place. I don't want this to be twisted, you know? I can't get the notches to match. So I'm going to just make them the same off on both sides. That's my strategy. <laughs> it's a lot easier to sew it from the um, straight hood piece than the curved hood piece. So I have the, the center hood up on top. They haven't been stationed on the East Coast yet. I don't think they will. He finds out this year if they have to leave the state they're in, which they want to stay in. All right. Got my hood. And I'm pretty sure. See, this, that little center hood piece, I was like, what is that thing? I could not figure this thing out. And it's literally the center hood right here. <laughs> I'm such a, I'm so hopeless sometimes. I was like, what is this piece? I was picturing it as like a little flap right here. And I couldn't get that image out of my head. <laughs> and I was looking everywhere in the instructions, all through the hood. And they don't put the piece number next to the um, piece name. So I was just looking for like the piece number at first. And I was like, oh, no, no, they don't do that. I don't do that. So I had to like, I don't know. It was silly. Which way does this want to go? These want to push this way, so I'm going to push these this way. So 
So I'm going to do the... This is, this is correct, right? Let's let's make sure. I know, I know. I'm, I'm hopeless right now. Right? Yeah, it goes like this. Making sure. Just don't look right now. <laughs> I really wanted to be able to send this before Christmas and here's my rationale. <laughs> because I don't know if you guys have ever um, been in the business where you have to ship a lot of packages, but this is what I've found is that if you ship a package this time of year, it gets there lightning fast, no matter how you pick to ship it. But if it ships after Christmas, it just takes forever. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I didn't, I really wanted to be able to get this out the door <coughs> before Christmas so that it was on its way. Now I'm getting a tickle in my throat. Dang it. So I'm pressing the hood seam towards the center, but the, ooh, the facing seam towards the um, outer, to the, to the hood body. Rather than opening up the seam, because I was, I'm tempted to, but on the hood, that would probably not be the most um, intuitive place for it to be. So I didn't do it that way. So mine's pretty thick. So I think we um, understitched this. It does say to press the seams open, but I'm not pressing this wall. I don't, I don't have the, the right tool. All right, so then um, I'm gonna understitch it. And then I'm gonna sew the lining. Yep. And then we will have a hood. This is really thick right here. Oh, you know, I'm really sorry. I haven't checked to see uh, you guys on Twitch. I checked a little while ago, so oh, I'm really sorry. Night, Mint Malin. Yeah, I'll see you next year. Happy holidays, happy Christmas, happy new year. 
I hope it's a good one. What is that? Look at that. That little seam got a little tuck right there. I have to break it in. See that? What the heck? So thick. So I want to make sure that this rolls to the inside, but it also will roll in a little bit more probably because it's so thick because the seam allowance and stuff. Like that. Hmm. I just want to top stitch the heck out of this coat. <laughs> Mainly because um, of the thickness of the wool. All right, so here is my sleeve, isn't it? Okay, so let's move the sleeve out of the way here. Here is my hood. And I kind of want to look at everything here. Because um, I kind of want to switch to a different thread color. Yeah, right, Terry. And I feel like um, like that little understitching isn't perfect right there. But at the same time, if I take it out, I run the risk of, you know, snagging it. And it's really hard to grab your your stitches in that wool. But I'm gonna look at it again. Sometimes what I do is I just don't look at it for a second, and I go back and look at it and be like, yeah, that bugs me, you know. So when I got close there, I mean, it is the understitch, you know, we're gonna, but you know, it is the hood too. <laughs> Why does it look so funky? Maybe if I press it a little bit. This is the outside. I just don't like that either. I don't like that. Mm. Will I see it? <laughs> Very cozy. It's my eye. I'm having trouble getting it on straight because of the camera. Okay, that's my eye, yeah. I changed the bobbin already.
I saw the reflection of something over there and I was like, oh, what's that? I have a little sample piece of this. I want to see if my needle is going to be a problem. Going from the thickest to the lightest, you know, you never know what'll happen. So I'm just gonna test it out a little bit. It actually looks pretty good, surprisingly. Okay. So this is the top edge for sure, right? So much lining together. Let's hope it goes together a little easier. But look at that. There's the notch and there's that notch. It's already pretty far away. Uh, the lining's gonna be a lot less forgiving on this. I hope I can do it. I'm not sure I can. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna clip it at the notches for now and see if I can make those points. <laughs> okay, why? Why is there easing? I don't get it. I don't get it at all. <laughs> Why? Oh my gosh. Why? Why do I have to ease this? Okay, well, this is the one I had that was a little shy. So I have my hand under here and I'm kind of push it like this a little bit to kind of keep it as loose as possible while I keep the top layer taut. It's almost like maybe the notches are the opposite of each other. Oh my gosh, there's no way. There's no way. Oh my God, I'm so far away. I'm not in the mood for, <laughs> for this. I don't like that, it makes me doubt it all. The lining has to be the same. Why? What? There's no reason that these shouldn't be the same pattern piece, right? Yeah, so that's the wrong, the notch doesn't work. Okay, this is that pattern piece, you guys. Do you remember when I said, um, that the notch is, the notch that's showing up is the zero. Oh, this is the neck edge. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I might be wrong, I might be wrong. Okay, that was the wrong edge. Yeah, see this notch goes to the zero. The, the grade on the notch is flipped.
Maybe I will... Maybe I'll cut the lining of the hood bigger. There's no way. I shouldn't have been able to make the wool one work, but the wool's so forgiving, you know? Maybe there's errata with this pattern. Do you guys routinely look up the errata on a, on a pattern? See, in my opinion, if you're ordering a PDF pattern, they should automatically send you an update, right, on the pattern. So, and I don't know if that happened on this one. I She's on top of it, so I think that if she had gotten that, she would have printed it out. But there's no way that that's gonna work. So I need this pattern piece to be about an inch and a quarter longer. That's kind of a lot, you know? But, and if I, oh, hi, kits. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry I haven't seen you talking and my camera's like right in the way of the chat window. I'm so sorry. <laughs> my all's on the ground, exactly. <laughs> no toggles for kits. <laughs> she said, um, she's not here anymore, but she was like, I'd rather, die than have that many toggles. Yep. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry I missed her comments. She probably got a little bit miffed. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't blame her. Yeah, I don't know. I think I should recut that piece. But the thing is like I made the wool fit you know, and it looks okay. Um, this this does not look okay. What do I have left here? What time is it? Oh, it's one thirty. I was gonna go for another half hour. I was going to maybe I'll sew some other things and then come back to this because I still have uh, other things I can do. So I think I'll fix this off camera and come back to it because I don't really need it right now. Um, and then um, I'll sew together the lining with the facings and then I'll probably call it. So here is the sleeve lining. Slicker and snot. So there's no right or wrong side to lining that's really that obvious. You really need to make sure you end up with a left and a right sleeve. This is definitely a different color on each side though. Okay, that will give me two different sleeves. So I'm just gonna sew my uh, sleeve lining together and then I'm gonna sew the body lining together to the facings. I'm gonna add that back pleat to the back. Um, I'll put the sleeves on on the lining. And then we'll, that will leave the um, fixing the hood and then sewing the lining to the coat. And then, like I said, I need to adjust the length of her sleeves before I sew on the lining. So I feel like this will be a perfect amount to do. That kind of swung out right there. I'm really, I really don't want my lining to get bunched up. That can happen, you know.
So you guys, I'm, I was Christmas sewing something and I was almost done. All I had to do was do like the, the, like the last, I just need to sew one more thing onto it. Like it was like the last thing, right? And I noticed when I went to put them on that I had sewn two major parts of this thing inside out and which made them backwards. <laughs> and you know, I was like, it, cause, it, cause it works that way too, because everything was clean finished. So it actually looked okay. And I was like, something's all right. So I had to remove them and then sew it on differently. Um, because part of what I had done to the item, I couldn't undo. It worked out fine, but I was really shocked I'd done that. I was like, oh, okay. And then figuring it out, you know, it's like once you've made a mistake like that, and I know why I did this. It's because I did flat felt seams. I got the right side of the fabric confused. And so I did it to the wrong side, which means I put the things on backwards. And so, um, when I went to fix it, all I did was doubt how to put it on correctly. And so it took like five times longer, literally took five times longer to fix it because I was like, yeah, I, I know this is can't be it. And I would unpin it all, check it out again. Oh my God. So disappointing. But I stayed until it was all fixed last night, and then all I have to do is the finishing touch today. Um, and I got I got one of them done before the stream. So <laughs> it was there's there's those mistakes that you can just be like, nah, you know. But that wasn't one of them. I was like, oh yeah, I can't. I literally can't. I can't skip this. I have to fix it. It was, it was disappointing. Sometimes fabrics not having a right or wrong side um, can, can really get you in a pickle. You let your guard down. All right, so we have our sleeves here. Okay, so now we're going to put on the facing to the back, the fronts, facings to the front. Oh, did you, Sherry? Oh no, that's a bummer. Yeah, they can be a little confusing. I definitely feel like some of the tactics I came up with a really long time ago to ensure I don't make that mistake, I still use those tactics just to make sure. I'm just gonna tack this on here so it's less fussy. What do you guys think? I think the way you do the um, lining, you have to understitch it towards the lining. So if I put my, if I put my little tag it's gonna make the seam allowance go down and it's gonna stick up like that. I don't like that. I don't want it to be annoying to them. All right, so I'm gonna do my center back seam first. And then we're gonna add a pleat. They had one or two for this coat, but that doesn't tell you what pieces, Barbara. It's the center hood. It's not working. Okay. 
So what are, what's your guys's uh, like? Do a lot of you celebrate um, Christmas or any other like Kwanzaa or um, Hanukkah? Like, what are your traditions? I like knowing people's traditions. I find it really interesting. There's a really funny guy that some of you probably heard of named David Sedaris. And that says the opening line when he gets into it, like a taxi. Oh, they did, but just numbers. Hmm. The This one is number 32 and then the hood is 31. So 31 and 32. Okay, so we have our center back seam here, and then there's this little pleat. Is that really how big the pleat is? Just a tiny bit? I thought it was much bigger than that. So you stitch it down, just do it in the seam allowance. Let's uh, press this um, lining. 28 and 29 and 13 and 14. Well, darn, I wonder what they were, but hopefully she just printed out the new pieces, right? What's 28, 29, and 13, and 14? <laughs> Those are all pieces I needed. I needed one through 14 and up. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna turn this down quite a bit. It looks so dark on the screen. One thing I could do much better in sewing this coat is how to treat the wool and the pressing because that is one thing I'm a little a little under skilled for I guess I would say because I, I feel like you need like the, the wool clapper or wool the wood clapper style to press on the seams um, and then Yeah, just a little more knowledge. I could have used a little more knowledge about that. I've sewn a lot of wool and I've dealt with it, so it didn't even cross my mind, but I think it would look better. I don't know why you press the seam open when you when you end up stitching it one side. Oh, the errors were in print versions. Yeah, see, so I don't think, I don't know. Maybe I didn't cut on the correct line, but that'd be like a one and an inch and a quarter type of difference, you know? Ooh, this is fiddly. It's curved right here so that you have the space for the pleat. won't be washed so it'll actually stay pressed for a, a while
So Maggie's settling in with her new place, you guys. It's a bit of an adjustment for sure, but she's doing okay. She doesn't miss anything, which is so far. She's not like, where'd you, what'd you guys do with that thing, you know? Thankfully. Apparently she pointed to all the pictures I had arranged on her bookcase and looked at her husband and she said, your wife did this, didn't she? <laughs> I thought that was a little unfair for him. He's far more sentimental than I am. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Brooke. Me too. I want to go see her. I, you know, he's been bringing her like hot chocolates and things like when she was at the skilled nursing facility, which she is apparently a now an, a an addict for hot chocolates. Um, but her new place has this like bistro in it. it you know, like I said, it looks kind of like a bar and they have like the news in there in the morning and I'll bet they would make her a hot cocoa. Like there's like a barista or something. I don't know if it's as fancy as a barista, but you know what I mean? And they had catfish for lunch yesterday, and she said it was divine. Did not sound divine in my opinion, but she was over the moon. So, you know, there's that. The coffee's good. That's important. Which is really funny since the sh it's the same chef as the other place she, were she was living. <laughs> pattern piece had this cut off it would be a really great indication for your seam allowance you know that's my two cents <laughs> all right so let's see here I have my sleeve and my sleeve, my back, which I'm going to sew to this facing here. But it also means that I'm not sure about the, so what if I, I could put it here, cause there's a hood is that a little too ostentatious of me? I don't like slippery lining. I'm just going to tell you guys, I don't like it. I like to, I like it in a garment. I don't like sewing it. That's what I should say. It's fiddly. Okay, so that's not my center. Is that my center now? Hmm. Hey Brooke, are you going out of town? I forgot to tell you that uh, I sent something to you and you should get it on Monday. Just FYI. While you're here. That's what I was thinking, Barbara. Um, yeah, I like to kind of make it so it lays flat. I think that's a good idea. I've been doing that. It means I have to switch my thread color, so I might try and find a way to round it. But um, I've been doing that and other things too. Oh, nice. You get to stay home. That's nice. You deserve it after having to travel for Thanksgiving. 
Okay, this pleat, now this pleat feels like it could be bigger. I'm gonna go from this side now to the center. I'm gonna cheat. That's what I do sometimes. trying my hardest not to um, pull on the lining because it's like all on the bias right there to get it to to fit but see I have this little bit extra and I think what I'm gonna do is drape that into the pleat because I wouldn't mind a bigger pleat right here when you have a pleat there you can cheat that's okay Jeremy says so. So now I know exactly how much to play. can hear someone out there. All right, so now we have our, I think my pleat goes the wrong way now. Like not wrong, wrong, but just like the opposite. What's this little tuck? What the heck is that? A little tuck there. From when I backstitched, it tucked my fabric. What the heck? Ooh, this thread color looks so good on here. So I'm gonna stitch this down. All right, so we have our hood facing there. What's that notch? <laughs> that a little nip in the fabric? Oh, it's a double notch. Okay, got it. All right. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to center my label over it, which matches this camel really well. I'm going to put it a little lower. All right, so there's the, that facing. And then we have this facing here. Same idea. Stitch this in a couple places just to stabilize it onto the facing. Stabilize the horse hair basically. You guys are troopers hanging out here. I know it's a busy time of year. Don't feel like you have to sit here. It's my little quiet sewing day here. I haven't wrapped any of my presents yet. I don't have a whole lot to wrap, but I haven't wrapped any of it.
Loki and Molly got a bark box in the mail yesterday and it was Christmas themed. And so they got a nutcracker toy that was hollow inside. It was like hard and hollow inside. So I think you could put treats in it. But the funny thing that Loki got was a walnut. <laughs> Sherry, awesome. Um, he got, it's, it's supposed to be like a little walnut. So it's got this like nubbly ball inside of us, like stuffy cover, you know. I, we're seeing more and more toys like that where it's um, this nubbly like ball that squeaks inside of the stuffy rather than stuffing. And um, he, it's like perfect size for him. It's a little big for him to like put his mouth around, but it is kind of funny. Like walnuts around here are like a big deal, you know, like agricultural. So I think it's kind of cute that we got a walnut. And um, he's just been carrying it around and it's got a little face on it. You know, it's happy walnut. <laughs> it's pretty cute. But they got, so we got four little boxes in the mail yesterday and one of them was the bark box. But anytime now we get a small box in the mail, the dogs go crazy. They know the bark box. And so I put it under the tree. It was just sitting on a chair when I got home. I just put it under the tree. What the heck? My facing is all higgledy piggledy. Um, and um, Loki tried getting it open. Molly tried getting it open. They actually, it's little bad dogs, man. They were like, oh, that's ours. But they were trying to get, I bought Maggie, um, I had to order it a, like a portable electronic reader, reader. Like, I don't know if you've ever known someone with eye issues. She has this prescription one, it's massive. It's like bigger than my computer and it has this table and a tray. You put the magazine under it and it magnifies it and then you can read things. And, um, and her insurance paid for it. And so um, she had a portable one and it died and we could not figure out what was wrong with it. So I looked at trying to buy her, buy her one and I got overwhelmed and this was a few years ago. And this year I'm like, you know, I'm getting her one. I don't care, I'll just, I'll just figure it out myself. So I ordered one. So anyway, that was in a little box that looked suspiciously like a bark box and Molly was jumping up and down trying to get that thing. I was like, dude, you're gonna be unhappy when I open this. She was, she was like, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> So then Cricket got home and she's like, can we open the bark box? And she's as bad as them. I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? Wasn't going to survive under the tree. All right. So I'm just sewing this half inch seam together. It'll be gently curving and the curves will be kind of opposing curves soon. But this kind of thing isn't too hard just long but I am just lining it up here and stitching it down and then I'll understitch it so see there's that that curve so sometimes I just pull it like this and as long as I don't get any tucks and I'm not distorting it it should be pretty easy before I do that I hold one layer up I do it. Yeah, it was really cute. They are. It's kind of funny that they they figured it out right off the bat. Like Molly knew when Loki started getting those boxes again. Molly knew exactly what those were because she used to get them. And he was like, "Why are we excited? Why are we excited?" He'll he'll glom onto whatever mood she's in in a heartbeat. She loves it when I go do dishes at night. And he's like, I don't know why we're excited, but I'm excited. But he doesn't beg or anything for for food at the table. So she kind of sits nearby, but she doesn't really beg. So he doesn't really know what he's trying to do, <laughs> thankfully. There we go. This is why this coat has so many pattern pieces and why it makes it such a great coat because you actually have like this if this 
if you, someone sees the inside of your coat, they don't see your lining right away. It's nice and finished with this facing. Um, it adds more stability to your coat. The facings also, um, that adds, you know, just the facings adds four pattern pieces, just, just in the hem facings. So, oh no, five. So that's, you know, that's a bunch. Like here and there, you know, every time you add a nice detail, it adds to the front, the back, and the sleeves. But that's the kind of thing that makes it also easier to sew successfully because you've got that facing kind of dictating where the lining is going to be sewn. And it'll look so nice on the inside of the coat. I know. They are really, they are really cute. They're such a good pair. Yeah, I'm kind of excited because the thing I got everybody for Christmas, that's why I didn't buy a whole lot of gifts. I got us all, I got each of my families, um, me, my parents, and my sister, the same thing. And it's like a, a way to share photos digitally. Can I tell you guys about that? So that was my gift to everybody. And um, I already set ours up and it's really fun. I'm, I'm really into it. Because they can, they can email pictures to my device and I can do the same to them. I researched them for like a few months and picked one. Okay, so now we have our back goes to our fronts. At a certain point, I may have to decide when to switch back to the camel colored um, thread. Oh, come on. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, that's so cute, Sherry. Aw. All right, let's see if I can get the other one to match better. I didn't even try just because I figured it'll go perfect. Dang, I didn't think I'd have to try. Who tries around here? I have to do it from the, the thicker side first. I like to really make sure I'm gonna fold it back, make sure. Definitely had to try. Oh, that's perfect. I, I was like, what am I hoping for? Because if it's perfect, I'm gonna have to fix the other side. <laughs> but I want it to be perfect. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'll just take it out. I was gonna just take out a section, but with that lining, it's gonna be kind of iffy. The other one looks really nice though. All right. Just some nice threads. Let's see, can I do it without taking the whole seam? Five cats is a lot of cats, Jerry. Like, I would love five cats. Love cats. 
But I don't, you know, like right now, everything, everyone's getting along, everything's cool. Um, and it's the first time I've ever come close to animals not like really being into each other because my white big cat, he's a little less into things more and more. So he's definitely not into a pug puppy. <laughs> They've never made friends. Like the puppy's all about him. But um, Haku's a little like, no. They will sleep on the bed together and even be touching each other. That's fine. Once the puppy's asleep, everything's fine. Yeah, I didn't get this start off as straight as my original seam, so I need to take that out right there. Oh, yeah, that's hard. Okay, that's a lot better, huh? Not bad. All right, so where are we at now? Side seams. So we get to, when we do this um, lining, we pull it through the sle sleeve. And I think I've mentioned that method to you guys before. It's the only way I've ever known how to sew the lining of a jacket. I don't know why I learned that method first. <laughs> but it's the only way I would ever do it. Um, and then like years go by and I never saw anyone else do it that way. So I wasn't sure about it, but I like it because the seam that you pull it all through in the underarm, no one ever sees that seam, you know? It's totally hidden, it's great. I made the same size changes to my lining as I did to the outer so it'll fit the same. Did I run out of thread? I feel like I'm about to run out of bobbin. Yeah, it's, um, and it's interesting how they have you do it. They have you unpick the seam to do it. Now, uh, one of the tips that the, um, Jenny from Cashmerette gave, I thought was a good one. She says, if your coat is really thick, make a bigger hole. She said she had to stand on her coat to pull it through the hole. <laughs> I would love to see that. There's no way I could do that with this lining. I couldn't stand on it. All right, so all I have is the sleeves to the lining. We got a lot done. I don't like it when, um, I'm always telling you guys, make sure your garment stays up here so it doesn't pull on the needle, but really this one just wants to slither off the table um, and it would get filthy. Okay, so I'm gonna press my seams. I'll do that off camera. Well, that's not oil, is it? Okay, I gotta be keep careful. This kind of stuff will get right up under my machine and get oil on it. Um, I have my sleeves right here. Well, you guys, we've used almost every pattern piece. All we have left are the hem facings. 
So we'll do that all together. I'm gonna fix the hood. So the only thing I'm gonna do off camera, I'm gonna do a couple things off camera, just so we're ready to go on, on Monday. So I'm going to sew, I'm gonna recut my hood centerpiece and I'm gonna sew it to the hood lining and then I'm going to sew it on this front opening seam. I'm probably gonna fix fiddle with this as well. Um, I'm gonna sew it lining front edge to self front edge, turn it to the inside. I'm gonna understitch it as well. And then, then you take your hood and you tack it to the neck. It seems like I'm gonna be doing quite a bit. So maybe I'll, I'll save some of it for Monday, so. Yeah, the lining looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, it's starting to look good, finally. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's put it inside the coat and just see it. There's no sleeves on the lining quite yet. I think I missed it. Oh, I've got the lining on. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. The sleeve is kind of slender. So that'll be kind of how it looks. Looking like a coat. Yeah, you wouldn't want to bend over much more. I look like a cleric. <laughs> this, these sleeves are kind of big on me, so I could see why they would want them smaller. Yeah. So that it'll be like, you won't even see the, oh, I feel like the toggles could be tighter, you guys. I definitely don't want this. I'm not going to make the sleeves narrower when I make them shorter. They feel kind of bulky, you know? It would be hard to wear a sweater under there. Yeah, I think it'll be a good all around coat, too. I wonder if the toggles need to be tighter. Yeah. Woo. It's gonna look good. I'm hoping that she doesn't have big arms. You know? <laughs> yeah, they're basically decoration. It's true. Um, yeah, so this is one thing. The only thing I ever find consistent about grain line patterns for me is that the armhole is a little high and the sleeves are a little small. But this doesn't, this doesn't feel that way. I think it's just the bulk of the coat, like the seams. You know? All right, so then we're going to sew this to here. You'll be happy to know I even matched the um, back of the zipper. So when it's zipped up, like no one will ever see it but her. It looks like this. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah, the blue is such a gorgeous color of teal. I wish you guys could see it better. But yeah, it's uh, looking good. 
It looks like a real coat. It looks like a real coat, yay. Phew. Yeah, it is kind of nuts, isn't it? That's why it's good to not obsess over too, too much of your details so that when you see it all together, you're like, oh, this looks normal. <laughs> this looks like a real coat. Cool. All right, well, and it'll have a hood. Um, and then, um, yeah, we'll sew the lining to it. The line, the sleeves to the lining. I'll sew that off camera, so those are done. Thanks, guys. Yeah, there's a few things I want to fiddle with, but I think all in all, it looks really good. And I'll shorten her sleeves for her, but I'm not going to take them in. I'm not going to taper them, like I thought. So... And then she has pockets, lots of threads. This is a nice little pop, you know? Yay! Phew. So we'll finish it on Monday. And then um, I'm going to, yeah, I have to finish it on Monday. If I don't, I'll just finish it off camera. Because <laughs> I'm not going to stream after next Monday um the rest of the week or the week after that because now i see where the holidays fall i'm not going to stream for those two weeks because you know yeah i just want to chill at home do some other things i want to clean some things in my studio too so so if you're around on monday stop by hang out have a cup of hot cocoa and watch so awesome beverly yeah that's what i need to do they need the same thing Cool. Well, that's good. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about it. My family's going away for four or five days. Um, my, sis my sister, my daughter's going to a concert, so my husband's going as a chaperone. So I get to be home alone for like four days. I'm excited. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, and I'm trying to get some other patterns ready. I just sent my pattern off to the pattern tester yesterday, so I need to record a video again. I'll do that on Monday, too. All right, you guys. Well, um, thanks for hanging out. I know it's a busy time of year. And um, chilling with this coat. Yeah. It's looking good. Cool. All right. I'll see you guys on Monday, maybe. And um, have a great weekend. You wrapped like your pattern coming in big table, man. Yes, that is so much better. Beverly, I totally agree with you. When my studio's been in the house, I do the same thing. So, yeah, you're welcome, guys. No, thank you, guys. I've had a really great year with you guys. Thank you. I'm going to try and put together a little, like, collage of all the things we made together. So, maybe I'll start the new year with that. All right. Um, see you guys Monday, maybe. Have a great weekend. Good luck getting everything done. Eat all the Christmas cookies and think of me. Um, show me your favorites because I want them all. So, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.